What's up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I'm your host, Edward Euler, as it says right there. Uh, happy to be joined by y'all, because solo game day again. Uh, it's the weekend, Jess isn't here, so let's play some games. So, today, uh, we are doing a second take on Lost Ruins of Arnak, designed by a couple of folks, uh, Min and Elwin, and published by Czech Games Edition. Check Games Edition uh, sent us this review copy some time ago, and yeah, there was there was enough demand on us going ahead and busting this out for Snakeside. We did the previous one, which is the I don't know what the basic side is. I forget what that basic side is. It a oh, bird bird side. The bird temple is the other side. This is Snake Side, not to be confused with West Side. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we're getting into it. Let's get into it without further ado. If y'all do find that you enjoy the stream, find it useful, helpful, whatever, um, that may be. I was going to go a different direction with that, but chose not to. Anyway, uh, give it a thumb down below, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Also, consider supporting the show over on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. Certainly, certainly, woo, 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 woo. anyway, certainly would appreciate the support. Uh, yeah, so there we go. I am not going to do a full teach. I'm going to do a full overview, I think is a good way. Highlight the differences between the uh, bird side and snake side. And then we're just going to roll right into it and see if we can uh, be 2-0 and o against the AI. All right. Uh, Place your bets on whether or not we are going to win or the AI is going to win. I did make it considerably harder for us. Uh, there is a difficult difficulty level between, call it one and, or zero and five, and we're doing a difficulty level of four, which the AI tile set has five standard tiles as well as five other variable tiles. The variable will either be easier difficulty or harder difficulty, and we went four of the five with the harder difficulty. So there you go. But that said, place your bets on us, us, because y'all are going to help, uh, or, or the AI over under on Glory to Rome's three and a half today. So without further ado, let's do it. Lost Ruins of Arnak. Let's give a little setting here first before we get started. Your task, our, our collective task, is to lead an expedition to explore the uncharted island of Arnak and discover the secrets of a vanished civilization. You will equip your expedition with useful items, search the jungles for mysterious artifacts and intriguing archaeological sites, struggle to overcome the guardians of those sites, and perhaps most importantly, piece together the fragments of Arnak's ruins into a coherent body of research that could lead to the discovery of, of, of the, the, the lost, lost temple, temple. All right, so anywhere you see purple, those are going to be victory points. Why does that matter? Because that's the goal of the game right there is victory points. That's how we ended up last game. Uh, I think we did three di uh, 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 difficulty from zero to five of three on the bird side, and we won by ten. So there we go. Okay? All right. So what is it y'all are looking at? Well, a couple things before we get started. Above those Roman numerals up there, those are home for the various decks, the decks that are right here, as well as a couple of discards. Uh, because this is a pretty large size board, I've chosen to cut that off. Uh, and honestly, y'all don't really need to see it because there's nothing up there. All right. The other thing to keep in mind 
is this sideboard over here normally would go down here at the bottom of it and make if you turn the board sideways, it would just be a really long, massive board. And honestly, it works just fine because all this is is a holding spot for the various uh, components and stuff, as well as some of the stuff that's off camera. All right. So there you go. Then we have our board, the AI board, and then the main board. So let's talk about the main board first. We have the card track up here. The, you have the moon staff. The moon staff is going to be the timer for the game because the game is going to take place over five rounds. So every time it advances, you know what round we're in. Everything to the right of the moon staff is going to be the items that we're going to be able to acquire, as is the AI is going to be able to acquire for victory points. Everything to the left of the moon staff is going to be artifacts. These are cool little uh, items, not to be confused with items, but artifacts that we have found in the ruins that are, all of this stuff is going to help us and score us points and, and do cool things throughout the game. Then on this part of the board, we have the discovery sites. The discovery sites or dig sites, these are going to be dig sites. These are the ones that are printed on the board to begin with. Normally they have two spots available for us to go on, but as it is a solo game, these second spots are blocked off. So these are the dig sites because those have already been discovered. However, the eight through here and the four up there are going to be uh, discovery sites for either a level one or a level two discovery area. So the level one's going to be here, the level twos are going to be here. And once those have been discovered, then they are going to get guardians. These are going to be big bad monster type things that we may or may not overcome throughout the course of the game. They're going to be worth victory points and give us some extra cool little benefit as we go along. Then, finally, we have the research track over here. Now, we have two research markers. We have a magnifying glass, and then we have a research book. The AI, which I've chosen blue because it shows up really well over here, the blue, uh, the, or the magnifying glass for the AI. As we go, we're going to be able to uh, discard uh, various uh, resources to be able to move up this track. Important thing to note, is when we do the research, the magnifying glass must always stay ahead or even with the book. Think of it this way. You have to discover something with the magnifying glass to then be able to transcribe it into your book. So that's why the magnifying glass must always be further up or equal to where your book is. So we go up here and then if you, we make it up to the top or the AI makes it up to the top here of the temple, be able to possibly get some uh, cool little temple tiles, which are going to be worth victory points there at the end of the game. All right. So then with our player board here, we have two explorers. All right. We start because the game, the AI will always be the first player in the game. They start with the first player marker. We will never get the first player marker. We start with one gold. We start with one compass. And we start with a, a deck of two exploration, two funding, and two fear cards. I'll go over these when it becomes our turn. But that said, we're going to just kind of shuffle these up. It's kind of hard to shuffle with just six cards, but I think that's probably good there. All right, so there's ours. Then the AI. The AI has a stack of 10 tiles. So on a given turn, they are going to take 10 actions. In addition to that, they have a plethora Efe, of research or of explorers. We have two. They have anything that isn't yellow, okay? But that's everything that you're looking at. And then, like I said, there are resources. There are five resources in the game. There's gold. There are tablets. Compass. Arrowheads. And jewels. In addition to that, there will be assistants that we'll be able to acquire. We have room for two of them. And that's that. Now, what is it? How do we actually play the game? Well, the game takes place over five rounds. Within those five rounds, though, we are going to alternate turns. The AI, we're going to flip over one of these and do whatever the AI says, because, or whatever that tile says, because they are the first player. They do that once. Then we are going to have a hand of five cards, 
and we are going to be allowed to take a main action, one main action per turn, and then any number of free actions. And I'll go over what those are when we actually take our turn. And then once we're done with that, we will discard, play our cards out, and then the AI will go, we will go bop, 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 until both of us pass. The AI passes when they've gone through all 10 tiles. We pass when we have no main action left to do, all right? We will be, like I said, digging and exploring, getting resources, moving up this research track, uh, uh, being able to conquer the guardians and all that, acquire artifacts, acquire items, all for victory points to hopefully at the end of five rounds score more points than the AI. I think that's good enough. All right. So that said, um, if you were tuning in and you were familiar with the game or you saw my last playthrough on bird side and y'all want to know what the differences uh, are on snake side. All right. First off, we're on the flip side of the board, right? You know it's snake side because there's a snake back here. Take my word for it. There is, as opposed to a bird. So that's number one. Number two, these are assistants, okay? Now, this is supposed to be assistants from the previous expedition. Now, I thought it, these are supposed to be randomly put out here. One of them is random. The top one, though, one of our assistants I thought was appropriate uh, that they're still out here and we have to rescue them or they get rescued. Okay, so that... Uh, is one of them. They will come in tapped. They will come in used if we move up to this space. Down below it is going to be a relic token. So our relics, we will have to discard one, but one that's not already been used up here to be able to advance to that space. So that's going to be one of the main differences. Another of the main differences are airplane spots. So there's a airplane only space here. There's an airplane and a foot travel there or a hiking there. Those are the, that is the main travel difference on that. And then uh, there are here, get an assistant. Now these are for the magnifying glass. On the flip side of this, it was only on the books. And I believe it was those two spots. It might've been those two spots, so on and so forth. And finally, uh, the last uh, change is when you get the compass up here, you'll notice you gain fear cards into your, uh, into your deck, which clutters your deck. So there's that. All right, there we go. So that said, place your bets if you haven't already, and I think we shall get started. I will bring up the camera and chat. There we go. All right. Oh, wow. Y'all are talking a bunch. That's awesome. Good. Keep this going. Let me, uh, wow, let me catch up a moment. Marifal, I did get that uh, email. Thank you for that, by the way, for the tea stuff. Speaking of which, today we are busting out, uh, we have some Yunnan on this one. Just straight up basic uh, Chinese Yunnan. Sounded good. Ah. I also have some sweet tea down there because jungle, hot, it made sense. See anything else? Uh... The other thing that I would like to reach out for y'all with is we focused on the research track last game. Do we want to focus on that or do we want to focus on exploring more? We did some. We did two or three explorations last game, but uh, I thought that I thought that that was uh, was interesting. That the majority of y'all said research, and if y'all want me to focus on research, we will do that again today. Uh, but yeah. I'll leave it up to y'all where we focus things, okay? All right. All right, so uh, a couple of things. First off, let's go over what the cards are out here, all right? So if we look at the one artifact, the one artifact is Inscribed Blade. It costs two compass, it's worth one victory point at the end of the game, and it does allow us for a uh, plane travel, which is the most powerful travel, that's good, or most versatile, as it were. Uh, it says, research with a discount of either a arrow or a couple of scribe uh, tablets. That's good, I like that one. And then all of the rest, everything to the right of the Moonblade will always be items. 
So left is artifacts, right is items. So here we go. Hot air balloon, okay. Exile this card, meaning basically discard it out of the game for the most part. To place in a, a researcher or an explorer with a discount of an airplane, if discovering a new site, you also have a discount of three compass, which normally, whenever you uh, discover a new site, it's going to cost some number of compass. So the, low, uh, the level ones are, have a cost of three, which in this case would be free. This one has a cost of six, which in that case would be a cost of three. Okay, all right, that, I dig that one. I dig that a lot. If we're gonna focus on uh, discovering and stuff, that is a must-have card. That is going to be really, really good for us, okay? Then, a army knife, uh, choose two different options. So, exile a card, get a gold, or get a, yeah, get a gold, get a compass, get a tablet. All right, cost three gold to purchase it. A sea turtle, our good friend the sea turt turt, uh, is draw a card and then place a explorer with a discount of a ship movement, okay, or boat. Then, this one is exile, again, discard out of the game for the most part. This card to buy an artifact with a discount of four compass. You'll notice that would make that free. So that's, I, dun 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 It's a whip, right? Y'all get, tell me you got that, right? Okay, anyway, I like that card. So far, those are my two favorite. Anyway, and then we have bow and arrows. So uh, we have gain a compass for each guardian on sites you occupy and each guardian you've um, overcome up to, th wow, those are really good. I dig that. All right. Um, whew. Wow. I mean, the whip and the hot air balloon are both really tasty. All right. So there we go. Let's go ahead, get started. The AI will go. All right. Uh, all right, let's get into it. So the AI will take their first action and the arrows may or may not come into play as we do things. All right. So this one says they will place an assistant. Okay, I'm gonna use the word assistant, explorer, and researcher all the same. That means these guys, the meeples, those folk. Does not matter the color for the AI. Obviously, we have our two yellow ones. All right. So that said, uh, we have, this is going to be placing an explorer out on a site uh, that has jewels, that provides jewels. So we look out here, none of these have sites yet. So it's just going to be down here at the bottom row. And with that said, we look which one provides jewels. Oh, it's that one. So boom. That is now occupied by the AI, and that's their turn. Boom, done. Pretty simple, right? Come on, it was Indiana Jones. It's a whip. You know, it's dun dun dun. dun. Yeah. Just saying. At least Monica, it seems, got it. All right. So first things first, we're gonna draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. It would have been easier to draw one and just leave that one there, but I digress. So what I think we were going to do is we're going to have our five cards out here. Better yet, we'll have our five cards here, and then as we play them, we'll put the discards over there. Okay, well, there we go. So we know that this card's a fear card, because we start with two of each. Okay, all right. So a couple things, all right? Let's go ahead and talk about what our options are and what our free actions are as well. All right. We'll talk about free actions first. You can do free actions at any time during your turn, before the main action, before, uh, during the main action, or after the main action. First one is play a card into your discard pile and with a lightning bolt and get whatever it is. So funding gives you a gold each, pretty simple and uh, compasses give you compasses. So I could, it's free action, these are unlimited. I could play all four of those cards if I want to get two compass and two gold, okay? So that is one option. The next thing is if we have any 
uh, idols. We can move them up to here to trigger any of those. We don't have any, so we're not going to go into that much. Uh, use a guardian's boon. We don't have any guardians. I'll cover that when we do. And then finally, use an assistant. If we have an assistant over here, you can tap it to get whatever the benefit is. So just the important thing is immediate actions or uh, immediate, whew, try that again, lightning bolts are free actions. But the anatomy of a card has more than just what's in here. And that is going to be, that is going to be this symbol up here. These are either boat or car or possibly an airplane. That's gonna be for movement because all of our available our actions. Our available actions are, here we go, buy a card, paying gold or compasses. If we buy a item here, the item goes to the bottom of our deck, face down, likely to come up immediately next turn because we're going to draw five car or a hand up to five cards. Okay, however, artifacts come into our discard, but it's as if we had just played it, meaning we get whatever the special ability is that triggers immediately without paying the special ability cost. We just have to purchase the card. So that will come into our discard pile. So that's the difference between an item and an artifact as far as that is concerned. The next option is to dig. Okay, dig is go to one of these locations, paying the movement cost. So here, let's go ahead and get, sorry about that. There we go, there. All right, so paying the movement cost. Now the movement cost is going to be boots. There is a hierarchy of movement. Boots are at the bottom, meaning any kind of movement token or a symbol, sorry, can be used for that. Then up above boots, they kind of branch off. There's a car and a boat, which is one higher than that. Either of these can be used for a boot. And then finally, there's the airplane, which kind of branches down to, that would cover any two of these. I'm sorry, any one of these, or it could be used as a boot. In addition, you can always pay two gold to act as if you had an extra airplane. So digging is being able to go to these sites. The next option is to discover a site. That is anything out here that hasn't been discovered. So what's going to happen is you have to pay the, that cost and then the movement cost that's shown. You get immediately whatever is shown on the artifact and then you get to put out a tile and you get whatever is on there. But then we're going to put out a uh, guardian and bad things potentially can happen or good things can happen on that. And then finally, the last thing you can do is move a, re you can research and move a research token. Well, since the research tokens start off the board, that means you would have to move your magnifying glass, paying either one jewel or paying a compass and two tablets to move up here. When you do so, if it has a tile, in that spot, you take that tile, immediately get or do whatever it says. And in addition to that, you then will get, whether it's the magnifying glass or the book, whatever that bonus is. So the last thing you can do is overcome a guardian, basically fight one of the guardians that will be out here on a discovered site, uh, but you have to actually be present in that location. We'll cover that later. And finally, passing. All right. So those are our available actions, okay? However, I think we have established that we really like that whip and we really like that hot air balloon. And by we, I mean I do, okay? Um, yes, okay, I did miss the top men reference, Corey. My bad. Uh, all right, so I don't know... The whip is going to be awfully good for us. The hot air balloon is only going to be a one-time use for a discover. I think the whip is the more important card. I think we go that, yeah, I think so. So here we go. For our first action, we are going to, as a free action, go ahead and here, I'll do it this way. These, when they're discarded, they'll come in, they'll come out tap. So these, this is our hand, this is our discard. So that will give us 
one gold there. And then, once we have done that, as our action, we're going to buy a card. So, we will take these two gold, we will pay it back to the supply, and we will take the whip. A little Devo action. All right. So, with the whip, this will go into the bottom of our stack. Boom, done. That is ours. Now, we can continue to play those, but I don't think we have a need for that quite yet. All right? So, there we go. We're done. All right, AI's turn, their second turn. So, they're going to take a total of 50 actions, right? Five rounds, 10 actions every turn, okay? All right, now, notice the red border on this. This is going to be one of the higher difficulty ones, all right? And what this says is we are going to, the AI is going to research, and in addition to that, they are going to discard a uh, assistant, okay? So let's go through that step by step. Their research token here will then come over to one of these two spots down here. Now, the AI never gets any resources, so they will never have gold compasses, et cetera, et cetera, right? But we don't know which one is going to be, do we choose the left or the right? Well, I'm glad you asked. Take a look at the arrow. The arrow says left side. So we will go to the left side. And at the end of the game, they will score. Oh my, y'all can't see that. I just realized that. So a moment. There we go. Had to zoom that out a little. There we go. Wow. Probably have to do that for all of them. Anyway, that would be worth one point to the AI at the end of the game. Again, they don't get the gold. All right? So, there we go. So, that is that. And then, they have assistants. So, let's take a look at the assistants. There are three different stacks of assistants. And because we are on Snake's side... There are going to be three in this stack, three in this stack, and four in this stack. The reason there are four in that stack is that is the extras because of the two that are on here. Okay? All right. Now, that said, we look which stack has the highest. This is the highest, which kind of sucks. I really like this assistant, but that assistant will then go out of the game. Boom. Done. So that is what, that is, their turn is Fini. All right. Well, it's our turn now. Hmm. So let's think about this. And y'all can see this, I think, pretty clearly. If we took one of our assistants and we dig here, then we would get a couple of tablets. A ta two tablets and the compass that we have would allow us to research here as well. We can't get the jewel because that spot, that worker placement spot has already been claimed. Or we could go here, get a couple of compasses, and then on the next turn, go ahead and discover a site out here. Now, we do have a couple of compasses here, so we could just go and discover a site out there. Discovering that would give us a tablet, a tablet, another compass. You get the idea, all right? Um, so yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Uh, anytime something is taken over here, uh, you see the, you'll see the little arrow right there. It fills in, so it slides, and then grief fills. There we go. Precision compass. Buy a artifact with a discount of three compass, including the top card off the artifact deck. Well, now. Cost four? Okay. I see you. I see you. All right. So let's see what y'all are saying. Um, by the spear. I kind of like that idea. I assume you mean the uh, inscribed blade. That's kind of... Ooh. Ooh, I like where your head's at. Oh. 
I like that Gusarino. All right, we're going to go with Gusarino's idea because I think that is a fantastic idea. It's going to cost us both of these and that. It gets us that. That will give us another gold. So basically, we either have a chance at that artifact, which I think is going to come in really handy early on for us. Because let me show you all this. If you look at the track over here, that gives us a discount of an arrow or a couple of uh, tablets every time that we use it. That becomes one arrow. That becomes just a jewel. That is either just an arrow or two tablets. So, and then up to here, it is just one. I think that is really useful. Um, I like that. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so here's how this is going to work. As free actions, we will spend these two compass to get us two compass, which we will immediately spend to buy that card. So I'm not going to actually physically get them. All right. But then this will come into our discard pile immediately. And this says, now normally, whenever we play this going forward, we will have to pay one tablet to, uh, to play this card. Unless we are playing it for the movement, then we don't have, or the, uh, the travel, then we don't have to. But if we play it for the main thing, we will have to pay a tablet. But that said, we don't have to for the first time you bought it or when you bought it. So research with a discount of either an arrow head or two tablets. Okay, excellent. So let's take a look. Well, we don't have it. We can't do this because we don't have that. So that means here, and it must be our magnifying glass because magnifying glass has to stay even or ahead of our research book. So, but, so we got a discount of those two, but it's still going to co cost us our last compass. Boom, done. But when we did that, it's going to be getting us a gold. So now at least we have a gold and we have a couple of really, really good cards in our deck. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty tasty. All right. Now, we could do something with this gold. Um, by something, I mean we could discard it as a free action to get a second gold. But I, I, like, I like having our, our uh, options for us. Uh, but you'll notice there's an artifact missing. So what do we have? Ooh, treasure chest. That means draw a card and get a gold. Draw a card from, your, uh, from top of your deck. I really, it's worth three points. The three points is awfully nice. But uh, it might be 5% of our final score or so, but nah, I don't, I don't really like that card too terribly much. Okay? All right. All right, so AI's turn. We just hope he doesn't take that card. So let's see what happens. All right, so just like the uh, jewel site, that's gonna, he's going to go to the highest available arrow site. Highest available arrow site is going to be that one. Again, it goes hierarchy of levels, and then if there's a multiple on the same level, it will be based on that. But as it is, he's done. All right, so now I like the idea. Well, you know what? Here's what we have, right? We still have them. Huh. Huh. So here we go. To be able to put a researcher out here is going to normally cost us travel. The only travel we have is that card. So we have a choice now. We could use this as travel to come over here and get a couple of uh, gold coins. 
or we could spend it as a free action to get the gold to then be able to buy a two value card, but I don't know. Um, I think we take the hot air balloon. I think so. Because it's going to help us with exploring. It saves us, it gets us a better explorer. I think so. Um, oh shoot, and we have a fear, I'm, I'm der. We have a fear card, which fear cards, I, total brain cramp, I don't know, thank you. Fear cards, these clutter your deck and they're worth a minus one point at the end of the game if you haven't exiled them. But they also have the travel, der. All right. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. We are going to play this for the travel. Now, we take a risk by doing it this way, but I think, I think we should. So, I think we go here. So, we paid the travel cost. We grab one of our researchers, and there we will get two gold. There we go. All right. Now, I stressed this pretty heavily in the last game, and I'm going to do this as well. This is the key thing that it seems people struggle with when it comes to this game. When it comes to digging at a site, meaning move a researcher to an existing site, or moving a researcher out to discover a location, the researcher may only come from your player board, which means 99% of the time, you will only get a maximum of two mix of dig and discover on a given turn. That's it. There are some exceptions to that rule. However, just know it must come from your player board. Okay, so good. All right, so that is done. That's our turn. We're going to hold on to that card. I don't know why. I, th I totally lost sight of the fear. I don't know. It scared me. I don't know. Here we go. All right, ha, uh, phew, good. All right, so this is the only uh, easier level card in their quote unquote tile deck here, okay? Because the green border. What that means is they are going to purchase or just take the lowest victory point item card. Notice the symbol here says item card, and that is the lowest. The difference between this and the high value or the uh, difficulty is that would be the highest victory point one. So there you go. So that will be the lowest. And now I want to point out that this is pointing to the right. That's going to come into play here in a minute because we look at all of the cards up here. One point, one point, one point, no, one point. So all four of those. But that arrow is pointing to the right. So therefore the AI is going to take the furthest to the right. So the precision compass goes over to them. I'll show you that in a moment. We have a tent, activate a site. You occupy, meaning you already have a uh, researcher on there or explorer, sorry. Um, activate, meaning you get to re-trigger it. If it's a level two site, you have to pay two compass. And that costs four coins, but that is a really tasty card. That is really tasty. All right, so now you'll notice that the game has that card right there. But we're gonna turn these face down, so it's a surprise for us, because I don't have the memory to be able to remember those, but they're gonna score points for that at the end of the game. That's the AI's turn, all right? Cool. All right, our turn. Well, I think we buy our hot air balloon, right? We have three coins, possibly four coins, if we wanna use them. Well, hold on. We have more options. We can buy any card up there. If we choose to purchase this card, it's going to limit what we can do this turn. Our second researcher will go to waste. But that's kind of an awesome card. It lets us reactivate a, a site. So basically, for instance, if we had this card, we would then be able to reactivate this and get two gold. I mean, that's awfully tasty. Personally, I think hot air balloon or the tent. Now, the hot air balloon 
The benefit of the hot air balloon is it only costs us two, which means it will not cost us our travel card, which means we're next next turn we'll be able to place this out there um, on one of these two available spaces in case the AI picks one we would only have the other but we would be able to do that so that's that's nice that's more stuff right the downside is we have to exile that card to make use of it meaning it's a one-time use yeah right the other thing to think about is these two cards are going to go away at the end of the round. The ones that are closest to the uh, moon staff go away every round, so that will go away. Now, thing to keep in mind, the tent will be available next turn, potentially, unless... No, in fact, it will be because the AI has already taken their card for, uh, for item card this turn. But that tent is awfully good because we know we're going to be able to use that tent next turn. Now, we'll be able to use this, but again, it must be for a explorer that's already, that's still in our camp, right? Um, so basically, that would allow us, like if we were to research or dig here, it would allow us to be able to, uh, we would need three compass, though, sorry, because that caught as a discount of three. Oh... Uh, All right, sounds like hot air balloon. All right, let's do it. So we have two co or we have three coins, three gold. So we'll spend that. We'll go ahead and grab the hot air balloon. Hot air balloon goes to the bottom of our deck. It doesn't really matter because there's only three cards there, but I digress. And then slide and refill. Chronometer. Uh, immediately, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Ooh. Interesting. You can do play that as a free action to get a coin or a and a compass, or just pass, meaning that's the end of your turn to get three compass. Interesting card. All right. All right. So that is our turn. AI. There we go. That um, they will not do anything. Because that says, take one of their, you know what, let's scoot these guys over. There we go. Uh, take one of them and put it on the highest spot that offers gold coins. There's still none up here. And uh, we already are there, so they just don't do anything this turn. Okay? All right. Easy enough. So now it's back to us. Uh, we could. Oh. Oh. Well, here's a third thing to keep in mind, something I didn't think about. We have this as a gold coin. We have one gold coin. We could, because we that would give us two gold coins, uh, we could get the bow and arrows, which is going to generate a uh, compass for us as we overcome more and more guardians. But again, that means our researcher would hang out here but that would give us a card. The other option is we probably use that to travel to go and get two compass right now. What do y'all think? It's either gonna be compass or bow and arrows. Y'all choose. I'm gonna enjoy some Yunnan. Oh, Gusarino, that's good to hear. Very, very glad to hear that. What's up, Cray? Oh, hold on. I shouldn't just limit it to the compass. The tablets will come in handy because if, again, keep in mind, we're going to draw a hand of five cards. There are three here. If we happen to draw that artifact into our hand, we need tablets to be able to play it, we would then have tablets. So I don't want to limit that. That's actually a very, very, uh, very good point. Who was that? Gusarino. Okay, so it looks like tablets is, uh, tablets is the winner. All right, tablets it is, y'all. All right, so we will use the boat 
which is more than enough travel. That's overkill for travel, right? All right, so we will discard that for travel. Boom. And we found a couple of Dead Sea Scrolls. Not really, but it's amusing to me. All right, there we go. Boom. Now note. I think we're pretty much done for the rest of the round. Okay. What's up, Paul? All right, here we go. All right. This is, again, the higher difficulty one. says, uh, if the AI has a explorer where there is a guardian, it then, uh, uh, what's the right word? It, it overcomes a guardian. There are no guardians out here yet. So in lieu of that, it does what the bottom is, and the bottom says it will research. And then note the arrow pointing to the left because we come over here, there are two options for the AI to go. It would either go to this spot or to that spot. Cannot go to this one because this one is the one that's tied there. And because the arrow is pointing to the left, it will come up here. It will immediately take this. Or in other words, this just goes out of the game. Boom, done. And there we go. The game has researched. It becomes our turn now. We have two tablets and a gold. One gold is not two gold to be able to buy something. We have no compass, so we can't do any of that. We've used both of our assistants, so we can't dig or discover a site. There are no guardians to overcome. Uh, we have no cards in which to be able to play. We don't have the research, it, or I'm sorry, we don't have the, um, the resources to be able to here, we are one compass short to move our book up to here, which would then immediately get us an assistant. That's awesome, but we don't have the compass, so we can't do that. And we do have the tablet, but we don't have the jewel, so we can't research. What does that mean? We pass. What does that mean? We're done for the round. Okay, so the AI takes the next four actions. There we go. Okay? All right. The highest point value artifact it takes. Okay, well, right now there's only one, and it's a three-pointer. That really sucked. But we get to see what card's going to get discarded. So the card, don't get attached to it, whatever it is. The war mask is going to go away. Uh, don't gain fear from, oh, that, eh, whatever. Don't gain fear from Guardians this round. If you have um, any explorers at the end of a round where there are Guardians still on the board, you would gain a fear card for each, but as it is, no, you wouldn't. But again, don't get too attached to that card because it's going to go away. All right. So that's there. Here. Uh, it really doesn't matter. They are going to put it one of these out there because we're done, so it really is kind of moot. Okay. So this is the first time that we've seen this one. This is the higher difficulty one. What is the higher difficulty? It basically means something does happen in round five. That's the difference, okay? So what this says is the AI is going to uh, discover a site. So let's walk through this and I just wanna make sure I get this right for the first time we do this again. Uh, it will always choose The bottom row, if possible, the lowest possible row. So it's going to be a level one discovery, which means going to be in the main area and the arrows pointing to the right. So therefore it would be between these eight. It will always choose the bottom row if possible, which is, and then it, the arrows pointing to the right, it will then do this one. So a few things are going to happen. It's going to take this. I'm just going to set that aside for a moment and then it, well, back up, it's going to put one of his, their assistants. Then we're going to grab the top level one. Boom, done there. So what that means is, had that been us that had discovered this site, we would gain a fear card, a compass, and a jewel, okay, in that area. You can see that's a level one, all right. But then it also comes with a guardian on top. Guardians? When they're overcome, uh, they are worth five points. And here we go. And that is a spot we will never, ever go to because screw you, spider. Uh-uh. 
burn it with fire, not going anywhere near it. That spot is dead to us. Okay, um, I, I really dislike spiders. Anyway, to overcome the guardian, it's a separate action normally. We would have to have a explorer already there, and then we would have to pay all of the shown resources on the guardian tile itself. Not on this one, this is what you get. This is what you would have to pay to get the gar uh, to uh, overcome the guardian. Discard a card from your hand without effect, pay a gold, pay an arrowhead, and then you would get this guardian. When you get this guardian, as a free action at any time, you may exile a card, either from your hand or from your discard pile. Okay? And whether you use this or not, it's worth five points at the end of the game. So, that's what... The oh, back up! Back up! Does not put out a guardian for the first, only on the second and fourth. Back up. Hey, spider, you just get buried. No, 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 no spider. Spider's at the bottom of the deck. So there we go. My bad, my bad. Spiders are not friends. To hell with you, JJ. If you all give me one second. I don't know if that'll work or not. All right, anyway, cool. All right, so that said, here we go. Last action is they go onto a tablet spot. There is none. They would do nothing. Boom, that's the end of the round. We're a fifth of the way through. Now we have to set up for the next round, okay? So we take our explorers back. If they were on a spot where there was a guardian, we would gain a fear card. But there isn't, so we don't need to worry about that. Done. Then, this is an important detail. Here are our cards from our discard pile. You take these, shuffle them every round, your discard, and then put them to the bottom of your deck. Okay? Because we have three cards in our deck, and then all of these are going to go in there. And we'll cut. There we go. And done. So that's done. Uh, any assistance that were tapped would untap. We don't have any. Okay? Uh, the AI, we will take all 10 of their tiles and shuffle those up, okay? Okay, fine, we will shuffle the Guardian stack after we are done. There we go. That's good enough. They get their explorers back. That's good there. I think that works. Oh! Oh shoot, there is one other thing we forgot to do uh, on the AI's turn. Remember, because they discovered a site, they got this uh, idle token. They have spots up here for the six different types of idle tokens that are in the game. If they do not have one already on that spot, it goes up there. At the end of the game, it'll be worth three points. Why does that matter? Because if they were to get another of an identical that they already have up here, it will go here face down, and then it will only be worth two points because three minus one for every one that's in that stack. Okay? All right. So here, for you monsters, so there, and yes, I do know that the spider is buried somewhere in there. So here, just to show that there is no hard feelings, there totally are. So there we go, good enough. There, everyone happy now? Everyone good? All right, so now, last thing we have to do for the round is this is going to go into its own discard pile because there are cards that allow you to dig into the exiled cards. So the ones closest to the moon staff go away. The moon staff will move over. Everything to the left are going to be artifacts. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna put that right there. There we go, so done. And now we will have two artifacts. So this will go there and then whoop, there we go, we have the Guardian's Crown. Move a Guardian from a site you occupy to an unoccupied spot. 
Oh, with no guardian, activate that site. Interesting. So it could actually go down to the campsites. That's at the very bottom. That's interesting. The idol of Aru Anu. Research with a discount of a jewel. Well, that's kind of tasty. All right. Cool. So that's it. Now we draw five cards. All this makes sense? You all following along? Okay. I'm all for snakes. Spiders? Spiders can go to hell. Jess and I have an agreement. She handles the spiders. I handle everything else. Bug-wise. I'm good with this. Oh! All right. So there's our hand of cards. You know what? I don't like that glare. It's better. All right. So the AI takes their first turn because the AI cheats and is always first. All right. So here we go. Takes the lowest point value item. So obviously we know what 10 things that does. So this is going to go really, really quick. So lowest point value item. Well, uh, that's a no brainer. There is only one. Say goodbye to the sea turt turt because all the others are two pointers. And then Theodolite? Is that how you pronounce that? Theodolite? I don't, is that, apparently it's that contraption, like a telescope on a contraption. All right, gain a gold and then, uh, or get a gold, then gain a compass for each of your researchers already placed on the board. Eh, all right. Eh, eh. All right, our turn. I'm just glad that the majority of the real scary spiders are way out in an, on a giant island. Just saying. It's a surveying tool. All right, there we go. Um, so what do we have? So the whip allows us as a one-time use to get an artifact with a discount of four compasses. I'll be honest. And this one allows us uh, a discount uh, for discovering sites, but exiling that card as well. Now, the only thing, I don't know that I really want to, I don't know that I really like either of those artifacts. Move a guardian from a site you occupy, activate that site. Eh, I don't know. And I mean, that is nice. So basically you spend a, a tablet instead of a jewel. Eh, I don't know. So, I don't think so right now, but that bow and arrow, potentially still, or I'm sorry, that tent is awfully, awfully tasty for a double activation, right? We do have a coin. We have a coin. If we were to come down here, that would give us four coins, which could give us the tent for next turn. And that's a double activation going forward. Other thing to keep in mind is here, it would gain us a fear card, but it gives us a compass and a jewel. Huh. We do have a couple of tablets. We, ah, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of getting the money to be able to go after that tent. Hey, Christos. I kind of like that idea. I like that tent. It is points. The AI cannot take the tent. It already took an item. So the tent is safe. However, 
it can take that. There is a one in nine chance that it takes that because it takes a, a spot that has coins on it and that none of the other Discover sites do. And the fact that we only have one compass, the other spot could either go there. If we go here, we're not going to... Eh, I mean, we can still exile that card, but I really wanted to save that for one of the top rail ones. Um, I mean, the other option is we could go ahead and use the hot air balloon now. If we do that, that would be, it says exile the card to place an explorer with a discount, basically any of the bottom seven spots, right, um, is what it would be. All right, y'all y'all feel like, uh, okay, y'all agree with that, so that's what we're going to do. So we are going to exile this card, so thank you. You, it is going to carry us to one of these spots out here. So boom, done. We do not have to pay the cost because it's a discount of three. And uh, because we have a discount of flight, we can go to any of these locations out here. Okay, so now where do we want to go? Well, there we go. Let's look. What do we want? What's our... Uh, I mean... I like this one because if we want a compass, might as well save this since that's the lower travel value for us, right? Uh, no need to exile a card, so no. This is to turn tablets into arrows or arrows into gold. I don't really feel the need to do that. This is untap an assistant. We have no assistance. So basically, it's if we want the gold if we want a tablet or if we want the compass. I don't think, I mean, we could exile a fear card. In fact, if we choose here, we would still have to discard our fear card for travel because the airplane discount would only be for one of those symbols. That's a good point. Um, I kind of am thinking this one. Hmm. I mean, we have a couple of tablets already. do what do we do i mean the other thing here's the other here's the downside of going to the exile is we would have to play it from our hand exile it from our hand and that's one less travel icon we have i mean it's not the end of the world All right, so there you go. Choose compass or exile. We'll limit it to those two. When I get two answers from here going forward. That's a fair point. That's actually a really fair point. Yep, uh, what uh, Bertovin and um, Temujin say, that's what we would do. All right, I'm good with that. So instead of doing the hot air balloon yet this turn, instead, we'll go ahead and use, I'm good with that. I like that idea better. We'll use the fear to travel. I like that idea. And because we're talking about the tent, right? We need four gold. We have one. Let's go ahead. 
Yeah, because we are not going to have a third. Uh, we do have a third compass. Okay, here's the other decision now. We either go here to get the tent, or we go here to explore a second time. Those are our only two options. Those are the directions we're going to go, right? Oh no, we're going to... Never mind, we are not going to do that. We are going to grab the two gold, not a decision, because the other explorer is gonna be used with the hot air balloon. So boom, done, good call. All right, there we go, I like that. Hey, Michelle from Italy. Okay. All right, there is no guardian. So therefore they are going to research and there's only one spot they can research. This goes up there, eats up that, boom, done. Okay, our turn. Now we will hot air balloon. And then we will go ahead and we will choose the exile one. The exile happens immediately when you take that, you flip it over. This is out of the game, or it, for a fear card, it just goes back into the deck. Okay, cool, good. And now, we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, at any point as an action, or as a free action, we can use our idol to do any one of these things. So this is spend a coin to get a jewel, get an arrowhead, get two uh, tablets, get a gold and a compass, or draw a card. But when you do so, you're gonna be covering up these victory point spaces that would be available to us uh, for end game scoring. So keep that in mind, all right? All right, so we use the hot air balloon to travel to this spot. We get that token, this is free, and then, I realize y'all didn't see me shuffle these yet. There we go, and that'll be ours. All right. We have, ooh, that's fancy. All right, well, we're gonna get to draw a card. We're going to get a gold coin, and we're going to get a tablet. So, boom, boom, and then, ah, okay. Not the end of the world. All right. But now that we've discovered that, what comes with it? Guardian. A giant vulture. Uh, okay. Well, there's that. Okay. So that's going to cost us a airplane travel, which in our case is two coins because we don't have that and an arrow, which we do not have. Well, we can't go here because both of our uh, assistants are out there. Now, what does that mean? At the end of the round, if we have not overcome this guardian, we're going to gain yet another, or gain a, a second fear card since we have exiled one of them already. However, we can use the dun -dun 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 -dun, the whip, exile it, to then be able to purchase the card that I'm like, eh, about, but comes in handy here, the Guardian's craw, uh, Crown says, you can move a Guardian from a site you occupy to an unoccupied camp or level one site with no Guardian and then activate that site without actually moving our uh, researcher there. So we just get whatever it is. That's kind of cool. Okay. All right. So, and that's why we held on to the whip this turn. Crack that whip. All right. Let's go. All right. A couple of uh, tablets. So, now we look up here. There is a spot with a tablet, so we would always go for the highest level site, but we've already occupied that. There is none there, so they will go to that spot there. Our turn. So we have four coins, which can get us the tent, but we don't have to worry about the game taking that. So we can do that later. So those four coins are accounted for. Uh, 
I misspoke. Huh. I don't like this card necessarily. It's not bad. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel great. The other thing, we could do that to get an arrow, and then we could spend two coins, which is an airplane. We could overcome that guardian, which allows us to exile a card. Say, that. And that would be five points. Well, really, it'd be four because we're losing one there. I'm just saying that is an option for us. Okay. Also, we could research here with the notebook, which would get us an assistant. So let's look at what the assistants are, okay? Uh, the assistants say get two coins, get a compass, or draw a card and discard a card. Huh. What do y'all think? The other thing to think about is these are free actions, too. Huh. Another thing we could do, again, looking at options here, right, is we could, instead of getting this one, we could get this one for three compass, I think. That would be one. No, we only have, uh, no, sorry, this is free if we use the whip. Research with a discount of a jewel, which the book could come here, which could get us a assistant as well. Ah. Uh, All right, so let's see what you all think. Uh, all right, this is good. Have a good one, Kabuki kid. Oh, or better yet, we could get this artifact Move that there, we would get that, which then would allow us to get the book, which gives us the... Oh, I like that better. I like that better. What's up, Felix? I like that better. Okay. So we're going to exile the whip. We're going to purchase the Guardian's Crown. Not purchase, but acquire. The Guardian's Crown says, move the gu a Guardian from a site you occupy. So the Guardian will then come over here. The only thing is that gives us a fear, but it also gives us a compass. Ah. Yeah, still worth it to me. So we will get a, the, a jewel and a compass. And a fear. All right. Because now we'll be able to do that, which gives us the assistant. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Okay. I think so. I think we're okay. I think that was an effective, efficient, collective turn. Well done. Fist bump, everybody. All right. Cool. All right. All right, so it goes on to, uh, no, oh, that goes there because there is a compass right there. All right, tent still hanging out. We cannot dig, we cannot explore.
So I think we go ahead and research. That'll go there, spending the jewel that we just got. And when we do so, we get an assistant. Okay. And I, whew, um, I can make a case for all three of those assistants. One, two, or three. Go for it. And while y'all decide that, I will refill the uh, artifact. That's the artifact we just drew. The stone key. Move one of your idols on your player board from a slot back to the supply. Oh, gains point. Oh, that's it's potentially a four-point card right there. Okay. Uh, overwhelming, everybody says two. All right, we now have the, uh, there we go. And that is available to us immediately if we want to use it. Uh, the rescue, I guess we could, uh, we could look at that. The rescue is the captain from last, uh, last game. So a compass slash ship. And there is one more below it, which I do not know. Okay. All right, we have researched, we have taken our assistant. Um, I see no reason not to use the assistant now. I cannot think of a good reason why we wouldn't. So we will go ahead and use that and we will draw another gold. Okay. All right, AI turn. Take the highest point, uh, so that stone key, don't get attached to it, because two points versus one, stone key goes away. Thief, damn it. That was a six point swing for us, potentially. The decorated horn. Exchange one of your assistants with one of the available on the supply board. Uh, the new one is the same level and refreshed, meaning silver or gold. So it ah, gives you a little chance to refresh one. So that's okay. All right. Oh, and by the way, because we did that, we had to discard a card. We'll discard the fear. So for that. Okay. Our turn. Uh, we still have the tent. We have no, so we can't dig and we can't di uh, discover. There's, we can't overcome the guardian because that's covered. We have two compass. We could potentially buy the decorated horn. I don't think we want to get rid of that to exchange it. So don't want to do that. Buy the tent or research. Let's take a look at the research track. Research track. We have four gold, a compass, and three tablets. Well, we don't have, we don't have, and we damn sure don't have two of those, but, but we do have the ability to get that or that at the expense, expense of a point. Is it worth it? Well, we have to move this because it's got to go up higher. This would cost us a point and a gold to go there. It would cost us a two gold and a compass to go, I'm sorry, one gold and a compass. And yeah, it would cost us all of those things to go there and we would get two gold back. Um, hmm. You know what? I don't have a really good feel for that right now. So why don't we just go ahead and purchase the tent because we know we're going to do that. So there's our four gold. We'll get our tent. And our tent goes to the bottom of the deck. Oh, get to ride an ostrich. That's cool. Draw a card. And then with a explorer that's already, that's still on our player board, 
uh, we get to dig at a site with a discount of a car movement. And it comes with two car movement up in the top left corner. So there's that. Okay. All right. AI's turn. Research and clear out an assistant. All right. Well, a couple things are going to happen now. So first off, they're going to research. Researching what's going to happen here now, okay? Let me. A moment. Let's uh, zoom that out a little so you all can see the point value. Realize that I zoomed in a little tight when I made this. There we go. All right. When this happens, that assistant's going to be recovered by the AI's team. And that will be out of the game, but we'll be able to then possibly get whatever assistant is below it. So let's find out what happens. This is part of the research. And there we go. We have a boot movement. Oh, for, a, for an arrowhead. That is awfully tasty. That is really good. Okay. So... That's nice. And then they get rid of an assistant. Highest stack is going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, two. So to be left or right, the arrow's pointing to the right. That one will go away. There we go. Boom. Done. Okay. Our turn. Well, now I really want to race up to get that because that arrowhead is awfully tasty. Um... So if we were to spend this, this, and that, like that, get, get us here, that would get us two more coins back. And then we would have a third coin to be able to buy any of the other items that we want. I think that's what we do. Boop. So we'll spend this, and we'll spend this for the coin, the compass, and the, uh, the arrowhead is going to be for that. So there. There's nothing already on here, unfortunately. But we do get two coins. Okay. Seems good. They go on the highest spot with the jewel. That's already claimed, and that one there. Okay. So what do we have left now? We have three gold, potentially, a compass, and three tablets. Unfortunately, we're an arrowhead short to get there, which would allow us to draw another card. We have a tablet, but we don't have the jewel to move there, and we don't have arrowheads there. Okay, so we're not going to research. We could spend this to be able to purchase a card. And we have up to three card, uh, so we literally can buy any of those cards. The ostrich just gives us a free draw and discount for research or for digging. This will give us a coin, a gold, and two compass every turn, hopefully, that we use it. Chronometer will give us three compass for the next turn or a compass and a gold immediately as a non-action. And the bow and arrow... All of a sudden, the bow and arrow is not as lucrative as all the others. Oh, really? So, let's back up. When we paid that fear card, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So we would have, so we have the fear card still. 
Uh, oh, we gain the fear for that. That goes into our played cards, so that's all our cards. Okay, so we fixed that. No big deal. Good catch. Thank you, uh, number six. Okay, cool. Um, so in that case, we only have two gold, a compass, and three tablets. So, can't buy any of those. We could only buy the bow and arrow, and that's it. Do we want the bow and arrow? Or do we save the two gold? Because as it is right now, it's two gold. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think we just pass. I think, I think we're done for the round. If you all feel differently, um, we, if somebody can convince me to buy the bow and arrow, okay. But otherwise, we can roll that back because they're not going to buy it. But all right. What's up, Mark? All right. So we're, it doesn't matter because we're not doing this anymore. So we would technically move this out. But again, we have no assistance left or same with that. And there we go. So we are round two. So we will put a level one and a guardian out there. Now, where do we put it? Because it's going to be the bottom spot, left or right. Well, what happens in this case, because there's no arrow, you take the bottom one. Oops, move that back. Where was it? There we go making a mess over here. You take the bottom tile, flip it over, and that will dictate. It's going to be on the right. It does not mean it gets an extra action. It just shows the direction. So it's going to go to the one on the right. So it's going to be this spot. This spot, that will go right there. The level one, I said to the right, that will go there. And it will get a guardian because it's level two. And okay. So that is a free item or two GPS or two compass, a giant scorpion, discard a card, an arrowhead, and a compass. Okay, there we go. All right. So that is the end of the round. So we return all of them. That works out. There, these come home. These get shuffled. Okay. We're going to get five, one, two, three, four. Five. That's for us. We need to shuffle these. So here. Good enough. There, there. These will move or be exiled, sorry. Ah. No fingernails. Going into round three, that will slide all the way over. And then we have two new artifacts that come out. Let's see what we got. We have a cleansing cauldron, draw a card and exile a card. That's kind of tasty. Exile a card with the, hair, uh, the tiger claw hairpin and activate an unoccupied campsite. That's awfully tasty, too. Woo! I like those. Like those. All right. Our assistant untaps as well. See anything else? Good. Done. All right. AI's turn. Here we go. The highest point value artifact. Unfortunately... Hope we didn't get a, we didn't uh, enjoy that tiger claw hairpin because that's the two point version one there. So unfortunately that goes away. Well, this is sucking. I like that. Get a fear, gain a jewel. So turn a tablet into a jewel and gain a full, uh, fear. Ooh, I hate that card. Why couldn't it have taken that one? That would have been great. Huh. Ah, that's unfortunate. All right, let's see what we got. Our turn. Okay, well. 
Okay. So if we discover a site and we can't beat it, we can use this to move it because we have three tablets, that's good. Research with a discount of either an arrow or two tablets. Well, that's here. I think we want to go and discover a site, if at all possible. So I think, because we need three uh, tablet or uh, three compasses, I think we come down here for this using the fear card. That'll give us four compass, and then we'll be able to come out here and explore something using like the boat. And the boat we could do that. So or we could draw that first. Ooh, I don't know. I think we use the assistant that first. So let's let's do that. So we're going to use him to draw a card and then discard a card. So here we go. All right. I think the obvious thing then it really didn't help us so we'll discard the fear i'm gonna just put them over here that's fine so we discard the fear to use the assistant then they're both boats and the only spot left that's a boat is here. That's okay. So I think we use the compass. Yeah, we're gonna use the compass, uh, the boat, to come down here to grab two compass, which gets us the three. All right, yeah, all right, AI's turn. All right, takes the lowest point item. And that is pointing to the left. So that is a two, a one, a one. So the theodolite is the one that's going to go away. And slide and refill. What do we have? A torch. Exile and gain a tablet. Okay. Okay. All right. So our turn, I think we go out and explore. Or, I'm sorry, discover, I think is the technical term. So we will spend the three compass for this cost. We will spend the boat to do so. And the only spot out here that we can do that with is no, because it's not a boat, not a boat, not a boat, not a boat. That's a boat. We could do this... Huh. For two quick. No, it's not worth it. So we'll do this one. So our assistant will come out there. We immediately get to untap our assistant. And now let's draw and see what we get here, shall we? Tablet and an arrow. That's not bad. There. And there. And then we get a guardian. Hopefully uh, requires a arrow. That'd be great. There we go. Well, if we spend our tent, we can conquer the... Is that just a giant toad? A terrifying giant toad? Uh, to conquer the guardian. Or we could move the guardian to activate another place. Now, if we were to move him to here, we would draw another card, which don't forget, we also have our assistant to draw another card, and we have three cards all day, right? Get another tablet and a gold coin. We have, that allows us, so two tablets and the arrow allows us to move that up here. 
which gets us to draw a card. In addition to that, we have the inscribed blade that allows us a discount of either a arrow or two tablets. If we you do that and move that up there, that would give us a second arrow, that, and we would exile a card. I mean, there's a lot going on this turn. Okay? Oh, good point, good point. Or we could actually conquer that with two coins and an arrow. And that would be a boat movement, which is kind of eh, lackluster, but it's easy to defeat. I don't know. There's a lot going on. But that's our turn for this one. There's a lot going on there. So let's see. An arrow space. So that's the highest no and then here. Left arrow between this and this, so it will go... Sorry, wrong thing. I'm looking at the Guardians. Check that. Not any of those, so it will instead come down there for the arrow. Okay. Doesn't hurt us. Huh. Okay, something else to think about. If we use our tent to activate a site you occupy... We could get a second arrow and a tablet there. Second arrow gives us that, which allows us to exile the fear card. Then we can use that to move up here. No, uh, no, it, we would, we would still need an arrow. So. If that's a discount of an arrow, then we use two of the tablets to move up there, which lets us draw a card. I like all that. Oof. You know what? All right. We're going to go ahead and activate the Guardian's Crown. I think that's the right thing to do. So we're going to spend one of our four tablets to activate this. Move the Guardian from a site you occupy to an unoccupied one and activate that site. So uh, I think we're going to move the giant uh, from that you occupy. I think we move it down to here. That's just so good. Draw a card, a tablet, and a gold. So that basically gives us a gold and a draw. We can always come and kill these guys later. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. All right, so here, unfortunately, there. All right. So that was this. I think we will research, research, because that can then give us, that can give us an arrow, which then gives us that, potentially. So yeah, I see that. Okay, I like that idea. So AI's turn. Compass. Uh, right here. Uh, check that. There or there, and it points to the right arrow. Check that. It will go there. All right. So now we will research with an arrow discount. Yeah, I like that. So we will use this there to activate that. So that's going to be an arrow discount. And the arrow discount is going to be to here. So we have to pay two tablets for that. But we immediately draw a card when we do so. Okay, that seems worth it. There we go. 
Done. AI's turn. Uh, gold spot, let's see. Right here. Doesn't matter because we're not doing any of that, but I digress, okay? That's a good point, and we still have this. So why don't we go ahead and use that to draw. Unfortunately, it's the fear, but that's okay. I think that's all right. So... We have to pay, okay? So now, I think what we will do, y'all can see this, is we're now going to go ahead and research again. Research requires us to pay one idol that is not on our track. So in other words, this idol right here is out of the game. It's not on the track, that's removed from the game. But the good news is, we get that, which is going to eventually give us more arrows. That's a good thing. And so there we go. So he comes in tapped. There we go. I'm good with that. Okay. AI's turn. Tablet spot. No. Right here. Done. Our turn. So we have the tent that says activate a site you occupy. The end. So we have a arrow and a tablet which allows us to go here which allows us to exile a card. That seems good. Or a couple of compass. I think we activate this one. So we will spend, use the tent to activate this, which gives us a tablet and an arrow. And that's our turn. AI. This is round three. So it's going to be a level one. Level one, it will always do the bottom. It doesn't, arrow doesn't matter. Compass, that will go there. That's another three points for them. That They cheat. Arrow and a compass. But no guardian this turn. Okay. There we go. All right. So now we'll research there. It's going to cost us two arrows, which is the two arrows that we have. I think. Let me double check. You know what? Hold on one sec. We can do that on a subsequent turn, but I cannot remember if they have bought an item yet. They have. So if that's the case, then we will do that. We get a compass for that. And we get to exile a card. So we will exile one of those fears. And I think we are now free of fear. No, we have one fear left. All right, that's okay. Oh, damn it. Uh... It's a fair point. If we were to go up to here, it would allow us to untap one of them. Which one makes more sense? That is a fair point. Hmm. Because then the discount here 
Ah, that's a tough call. We don't have anybody to draw, and we're not going to make use of the arrow this turn. So it doesn't really matter this turn. So I think we wait. I think we wait for that for next turn because I don't think we make use of it. Or, or we buy one of the cards first and then research it. Nah, that's what you were saying, right? <coughs> and that would get us three compass. That's going to be better. Okay, all right. Let's back that up. There, no harm, no foul. That's all that is. That's a fair point. So instead of going here, we'll go there, which that, all right, that's a fair point. So we get up to here. That allows us to untap one of our guys. That'll be that. We'll untap the draw. I like that idea. All right, so we're done because we still have three gold. We'll be able to buy the card. They research and get rid of a assistant. So they are researching to the right side. So they will come to there. And the highest assistant is going to be this one. Discounts, uh, convert, and that. Okay, but we already have our two, as it were. So now we will, for our turn, spend three gold. Which card? I'm leaning towards this one. This one doesn't help us right now because we're immediately going to be able to draw and we don't have anybody to play. So it's not going to be the ostrich. The torch allows us to exile a card and grab another tablet, which extra tablets are going to be useful for our artifacts. I can make a case for either one of those. They're both two points. This one costs more but gives us more explore. Um, I think the chronometer is what I'm leaning towards, so that's going to cost us our three. I think, I think y'all are going to be on board with that. So that goes into our draw deck. A little trowel, turn GPS into a jewel. That can be useful. Okay. Cool. And then, as an immediate action... We're going to use our assistant to then draw this card, and we have to discard one. So the question is, do we discard, do we get the GPS for a fourth GPS, or do we get a gold GPS, uh, or a compass? And I think the decision, I think the decision is we discard this one and get a fourth compass. And the reason for that is that is a compass and three tablets. I like that idea better. Um, oh, you're right. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. It wasn't just untapped. It was an upgrade to gold. You're right. So we no longer ever have to discard. Check that. Good call. Yep, 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 yep. You're right, so we, we just get a free draw. That's awesome. So our, we have a hand size of six now, or a draw of six, essentially. Good call. And yes, uh, I will see it. <laughs> All right. Uh, it doesn't matter, and it's our turn. So it's our turn. We will get a gold, and we will pass, so we'll get four compass. That seems awfully good. That was max use of our stuff here, y'all, I think. We don't have any guardians, but outside of that, I feel like I feel like we are uh, doing awfully good. And his last action, they get to take uh, claim a guardian where they are, which they are definitely in the case. So I need to see if this is top or bottom for them. Same as a dig site. Higher row prefer preferred. There's no arrow. So this will be the leftmost guardian 
where they are. All right, so there are three guardians out there. No, they're not there. Leftmost is going to be that one. They claim that guardian. So that guardian now will go there. That's another five points for them, and that's the end of the round. So here, while we're... back. We untap. That extra arrow is going to be awfully tasty, in my opinion. Uh, all right, what else do we have? Shuffle our discards, which is our entire deck. So that's pretty cool. A distinct lack of fear in here, I'm noticing. Except for that one, but that, that seems good. Yeah, I think, I, I think we're good, right? No, I did not exile the fear, I don't think. I only did that the once. Yep, so we're good. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you, though, Peanut Gallery, for checking. And say goodbye to our ostrich. You were a fine, fine feathered friend. Thank you. Goodbye. Decorated horn goes away. And now... Those two will slide over, and mortar, but no pestle. Okay, exile and two gold. Oh my. Runes of the dead, three tablets, gold, and a fear. Eh. Eh. All right. Uh, let's see, anything else? There, there, there. Nope, we're good. All right, penultimate round. Let's see what cards we got, shall we? Okay. Always like seeing the tent, boo. And again, I can't see a reason why we would ever not do this right away. I, I, I can't come up with a good reason for that. And we can always discard the fear for an arrow. That's, that's pretty nice. Yeah. All right. All right, AI turn. Here we go. Highest GPS slot. Again, not GPS, compass. No. Uh, furthest to the right. There, there, or there, and it'll go to that one there. Okay. So we have four compass, five, six, for potentially spots up here. Okay, so we haven't really looked at this one yet. All right, so these spots all require two symbols. We have potentially the six GPS. We have a boot and a boat that it aren't one of our special cards. We only have one gold or potentially two gold in a boot. So this one here, we could do this spot. We could do that with these four cards and these five tokens and one of ours. We would be able to exile the fear. We'd be, we would get two of those tokens I don't know. What do you think? I think we could. I kind of like that. Let's just go explore. Let's do this, shall we? Let's go discover. All right. So that's a boot and a plane. So, oops. it's going to be six compass. Or, whoa, hold on. Hold on.
it might make more sense instead to go somewhere like here first. Because then, whatever spot we get here, we could activate twice with the tent. Because we will have gotten two more compass. I think so. I think that's what we do. Because that's six, seven, eight. We would need six up here. I think so. We do not have a plane. I think that's what we do. So we use the fear to travel there to grab two compass. That now gives us six compass, a gold, and two tablets. All right. Top tablet spot, we'll go there, okay. So that's a plane. Oh, we're still one short, aren't we? I imagine we're gonna be able to make up for it though with whatever the tile is. So let's see, we need a plane which is two coins. Coin one. Coin two. Then we need a boot. The boot is going to be one of the compass that we just drew, which is a car or a boat. We do have to make a decision beforehand. Yeah, that's fine. And these six compass. We have not shuffled the level twos yet. All right. Or better yet, we could use the instant on that. Okay, let's roll that back. The six compass. Yeah, good call. I forgot. And a coin. So we've paid the six compass. We need to pay the travel. The travel. You're right. The travel will be using that as a coin and a coin. We get a compass back. For that coin and a coin uh, right okay there and then we'll spend that for the boot travel there we go yep there we go ha huh. all right so it's gonna be this location we still haven't shuffled these so you know what instead of shuffling three four five pick a number one through six and that's what one we're going to choose our guy will go up there why y'all choose those? We then get an immediate exile, which is our last fear card, right there. We have those in our back pocket, either for card draws or anything else that we might want to use it for to move up the research track. Looks like five is the first one to have... Uh, yeah, five it is. So, the next to the bottom. One, two, three, four, and five. Here we go. All right. 
So it's, uh, eh, I don't know if that's really super great, but it's not terrible. It'll help us with our research, which is, I guess, good. So that's gonna be there and there. And we get another guardian. Giant ant. Uh, I mean, we can kill that. It would require us to spend three, three, uh, three GPS, three compass, travel, travel, co but we can. And that gives us a free exile for whenever we move this up for research. So there's that. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, I think that's probably good. Yeah, I'm good with that. And don't forget, we can reactivate that or take a couple extra compass. So, all right. Uh, a guardian where they are? Yep, they do. So it's this one. It's the only one there where they have a guardian. So there. It's a destructive guardian over here, just trampling through things like a bull in a china shop. Straighten that up a little bit. Sorry about that not making things better. All right. Hmm. Oh, that is funny. That is funny. That uh, you, you use boots to stomp on the ant. That's funny. Kill the guardian, flip it now to make up for the fear you were, should I not have? Am I short uh, fear? Because if so, then let's just do that. One, two, and three. We kill the guardian. And then apparently I owed a fear. So we'll just flip that over. Boom, done. That's five points that we have back, uh, banked for us. Okay. According to the peanut gallery, I owed. So, okay. All right. I will take your word for it. Uh, an arrow, that spot, and furthest to the right actually is this one. So there we go. Now, uh, we have, this makes sense. So let's go up there. So that'll be a tablet in the jewel we just got. So there. That will gain us a fear. Have a good one, Monica. Okay, well, we just exiled it, so we're good. But now we gain a fear. But this token here allows us to turn a tablet into an arrow or an arrow into a uh, gem. And you know what? Let's go ahead and turn a tablet into an arrow. Because right there so that's done and we gain a fear that'll work then when we move this up we get to exile that fear that seems good onto a gem spot That'll go there. And for us, we need a gold to move up to here. We need a gold, an arrow, and a tablet. So we have those two. I don't know that it's worth it to move that up right now.
However, we could, if we want, move this one up here. Yeah, hold on. Two tablets. No, we can move it there because of that. So we have the tent still. And I think we will go ahead and uh, use it. Activate a site you occupy. Oh, but it, oh, but if it's a top, right. I forgot about that. Mm. Mm. You know what? Better yet, let's do it this way. Let's put that up there. That's gonna get us an arrow. That's gonna be an arrow and the arrow we just gained to then be able to move this up here. That will give us a compass and allow us to exile that last fear we just got. That'll make next turn that much better. Okay. Now this one requires us to have a boot. So we could have used the tent, I guess. instead of this to get the arrow. Does that make more sense? I don't think so. I think it's better the way we did it, I think. And a coin spot, that'll go there. Hmm. I really want to be able to do this. We could get the two compass, because that's where our worker is. Or if we can figure out a way to get a second compass, we can get two tablets and a jewel. And the way that would happen is that. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. So, we will get a compass and a coin. There. That's a free action. Then... You know what? I don't think we need to activate that. So instead, earlier, we will have used the tent. So we still have this. Yeah. So we use the tent as the boot to get the arrow instead of using it here. I like that idea. I like that. And now we will use this to pay a coin. No, we can't. Oh, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter if it like it it doesn't matter 
Oh, let's see how, what I'm looking at is how to move this up here. I'm one short, it doesn't work. Because, so technically here, I would have two free idols, but I was going to use it for that. So I have two free idols, right? But I don't have a coin is the problem. Aha, no, so I did it right to begin with. All right, I misunderstood. So I never use that. Okay. So I use that for the arrow to move up right here earlier. Okay, I understand now. Now I will use that for this. And now, I will activate the tent. Now I understand. Good Lord. And I will activate the tent to be able to reactivate this, which gives me two at tablets and a jewel. That's where it is. Think my way out of a paper bag. Because then, next turn, we'll be able to use these to move up there allows us to draw a card and get a free arrow. That's it. Sheesh. Shouldn't have been that hard. I apologize. Research and discard an assistant. The rightmost assistant. All right. So research goes there, kills that. Rightmost assistant. They're all at twos. That one will go away. Okay. And now, and now, we will spend that to move up there, which gives us a free card draw, and we get to flip our other assistant. Our assistant here flips, and will immediately give us an arrow. And then our card draw... is a research with a discount of either an arrow or two tablets. Unfortunately, we are one short to go up there. We're a gold short. Or we can hold it in our hand. So there's that. You are allowed to carry forward cards. Normally you don't do that though, but this might be a case where we will. They take the lowest point item, which is going to be the trowel that you can see right there. It's a one-pointer. The other one's a two. An aeroplane. Yep, all right. That's pretty self-explanatory. Easy enough. All right. Huh. So let's see. Unfortunately, moving up here does us nothing. It uh, gives us a free artifact. That's not nothing. Okay. But it requires a idol that we do not have. We cannot use the travel because all of our assistants are out. Research with a discount of an arrow or, a, uh, or two tablets doesn't help us to come up here because an arrow, great. Or, so we'd spend a tablet, but we don't have the coin. So we're going to hold on to the card. So we pass. This is round four, so that's going to be a level two with a guardian, and it will be on the leftmost spot, which will be over here, so they get the face down, face down goes there, and this one is also going to be face down because they have duplicates, so those are two points apiece, there, okay, now they're going to get that one. 
That's their last one. And we have a Guardian. Is a big scary snake, which kind of seems appropriate. Seeing as we are on snake side. Okay. All right. And for the AI's last turn, they take the highest point value uh, artifact, which is one. And it's the leftmost. So it'll be the runes of the dead because all of them are one pointers. We have a new artifact that comes out though. Monkey Medallion. Gain an item and place it onto the top of your deck. Which I guess is good if you have a big deck. Cannot lie. All right. That's the end of the round. You will shuffle up. Going into the fifth round, so we have, come on, here we go. Only the aeroplane survives, but what do we got? Serpent's gold, it's a lot of gold, and some fear. And the Guardian's Ocarina, uh, Ocarina sorry, uh, return a placed, Explore to your board. Each of your travel icons counts as an airplane this round. So that would be the exception of how you can, well, no, because it returns to your board. So it, no, that wouldn't be the exception. That is an awesome artifact right there. I love that. That allows you to put out three res or three explorers in a given turn. That seems good. And our discards get shuffled. That stays out. Goes to the bottom of the deck. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to be six because untap, but. All right, what do we have? Eh, you know what? Let's put those over there. So we need four compasses ASAP. We have access to one right now. Hmm. The way to do that would be with the tent, theoretically, here twice. All right, let's see what happens. I'm doing an arrow spot. So let's see, that'll go right here. Okay. We do have the Guardian's crown, though. We do need to dig once to be able to get that, which gives us a free artifact. That's how we do it. All right. So we need three compasses. So compass here, dig, or better yet, dig there. That's fine. 
we get this idle, which then allows us to research. We're three turns away. It's going to be either that one or that one that goes away. So I think it's... Oh, you know what? Draw, first off. My little alarm thing's annoying. Sorry about that. All right, so let's draw. Okay. Well, that's two compass. We need one more. We don't have any idols there. I think we still have to go there no matter what. What's up, Corey? I think that has to be where we go. I get I mean we could theoretically go there. Oh, the coin is a car. Do it like this. Sorry about that. There we go. Is there a way I can get... So the coin can be the travel for this. But we have two compass and we need a third compass. Unless I'm... There's no way to do that. We have to go here to get the compass. Then we can go here, and then we can do that. There's no way to, to get one turn quicker. I don't see a way to be able to do that. Yeah, no, I think we have to. So. And we might as well go ahead and use this to get the extra arrow as well while I'm thinking about it. So that gives us two arrows. That's the two arrows we need there. We would have the extra compass for this. So I need a coin and a jewel to be able to make it up to the 23 spot. Although, we could get the GPS, uh, the compass here with that, so we don't necessarily need the extra compass. Better yet, I see what you're saying. Yes, there you go. So instead, let's research and do that. So it's a coin, a tablet, and an arrow. Tablet, arrow, and there's the coin. There it is. And we get the compass. Okay, and that gives us a fear into our discard. Okay, I'm a little slow, but I get there. I get there, so here we go. All right, that's a really good result for us. So no, 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 uh, leftmost will go there. So now, Three compass and some sort of travel. 
problem is we don't have any extra cards. So now we have to activate one of these. Ah, oh, it sucks. So we have to use one of these three cards because the three compass, 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 compass to dig. And for travel, now here's the thing. If we use, say, this one, which I don't think we're going to use this turn because we already have that. So I think we could use that as the plane. So that would give us another compass. We need the compass and the arrow to go there. So, yeah, I like that. So we will use the inscribed blade for travel to that. I think so. So that will give us a compass. Really? Took care of that. All right. So let's go ahead and see what we get. I hope it's good. Well, I'd say that'll do, pig. <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> okay. Yahtzee. Okay. So, a guardian comes out. An airplane and an arrow. I don't know that we need that. I mean, it does give us the exile of the fear. So there's that. But we also have this, which will give us a second jewel, potentially. But we'll We'll figure this out. All right, that's that's our turn. That was uh, that was pretty decent, right? Cheers to us. The high ah glory to Rome. The highest point two or one one two 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 furthest to the left. Damn it! Boo. Boo. Well, what one of those do we like? I don't know that I have a huge preference right yet. So I think the first thing we do is this, now that we're not buying that card, now that that's gone. So that's going to be a compass, an arrow, and a jewel. A compass, an arrow, and a jewel. Because we will then get the 23 point space right there. And now we get to look at both of these and take one. Exile a card or draw a card. Woo! We do have one fear left in our deck, right here. So, do we draw a card or do we exile the fear? Y'all choose. Which do, I could make a case for either one of those. And just FYI, we have two cards left in our deck, okay? And I have no idea what they are. Oh, 
Uh, also, one other thing I want to point out is this here is not terribly sexy. I get it, but it is a three-point uh, item. So that's five points for that. So something to keep in mind, because this will be free when we move this up there. So that's, that's not to be... So moving this up here is worth one point, then theoretically, just work with me, two, so that's six points to do that. Or we can move this up there, losing the four, and I'm just looking up here what we need for all of that. A lot. Hmm. The other thing to keep in mind is if we defeat this, we would get the free exile there too. Oh, another thing to think about. is looking at this, there are these spots here. Because if we go there, we get that item, the three point item there. If we go here, we get the draw. So what have we not drawn? Well here, I mean, we're allowed to look at this. One is a coin, we know that. The hell's the other thing? The chronometer, right? The chronometer gives us a gold and a compass or three compass at the end when we pass, which is useless. So I don't know that drawing is really good. So I think we exile. Unless, well, hold on. The gold and the compass there. We have the tablets, so we would need an arrow and a gem. So hold on. We can use this for the gem, then all we need is an arrow. How do we get an arrow? We go there. But we don't have the movement to go there. Because if we use this, that gets us the gem. If we spend this, then, to move that up, that can get us arrows. And that's 11 points. There it is. Um... So we don't actually use our second one. Okay. We use a tablet this turn to activate, move that to an unoccupied site with no, and then activate that site. Okay. So, uh, that didn't work. No, we're going to use this to activate a site that we occupy. There it is. That, that gets us the gem. There we go. AI's turn.
Uh, it does not have a guardian. It does. It does. Check that. Right here. Okay. So it's our turn. We need two tablets. There it is, right there. Boom! So now, oh, that worked out so good. We need to spend a tablet there. Move a guardian from a site you occupy to an unoccupied and then activate that site. Okay. So here, we will move that guardian to there and we need exactly a tablet and an arrow. So we get a tablet and an arrow there. Oh, back up. Oh, hell. I got lost in my head. I forgot here. So we're going to do the draw. So that will stay there. Forgot to, forgot to draw. Oh, we got a 50-50 shot. There it is. So that got used. Because we are short a compass and a coin. There we go. Oh, I get a tablet back, apparently. Okay, there we go. Glad the peanut gallery is paying attention. Thanks, y'all. So that will go out on the highest tablet spot, which will go there. Okay, now we have a decision to make. A couple of decisions. Um, right. So looking at our board... We have a gem, an arrow, tablets, and potentially a gold and a compass. And the reason that matters is because up here, if we get all of those th things, all uh, six of those items, discard it, we get an 11 point token. So that would use our last card and basically all of this stuff. Now we still have this, which is worth three points. But, we can spend it to move up here, which then gives us an artifact. And the artifact will then allow us to grab any of these. So again, there's that and that, which is five more points, plus the bump up, which is six total. I think that's what we do. The only other option in lieu of doing that if we were to travel here we're a card short doesn't work I'm just looking to gra to kill a guardian. Doesn't make sense. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think we don't need to hurry for that. So this I know we're going to do. So let's go ahead and research. So we will go there. That discards this out of the game. Here, we get the monkey medallion. Right? Yeah, I think so. All right. There. And we get to get that for free. So this goes to the top of our deck. This is now used. We then get more items out there. Use 
Useful horse. We have no gold, by the way. Pathfinder staff, relocate. All right, this would be the exception. Relocate, meaning from the board, uh, and then activate. That's the one exception that I know of, okay? But now we still have this. All right, AI's turn. Coin spot. There. Okay. I mean, we need the coin and the compass to be able to grab. I, there's no way anything we're going to be able to do is going to be worth more points than that. So that's what we're going to do. It just makes too much sense. So we spend this card for the compass and the coin. Done. Then we need two tablets, a gem, and an arrowhead. And we get the 11-pointer. Boom, done. And that's our game. I just can't see anything better than that. Yeah, uh, well, the last, co oh, technically it's the airplane that we just put on there, right? Um, unless there was something that allowed us to draw a card, which I don't think so. Um, no, that's it. That's all she wrote. All right, gets to put out a level two. It'll be on the far right. It's going to go there. Unfortunately, that just cost us five points. But uh, check that, four points, because both of those are there. So level two. There. That's a nice sight. And something out of Starship Troopers. There we go. Okay. All right, I'm pretty sure we passed. We have no cards, we have a tablet, and we can't travel. So that's it. Yeah, we're done. Doesn't matter. Uh, the research track does matter. Doesn't matter on taking the assistant, but that will go there, and they will kill one if at all possible. They do. And finally, they take the lowest point, which is at least, hey, it's a one-pointer. So there's that. And there we go. All right. So now we go into final scoring. All right. So final scoring here is each research token score based on its current row. So we're looking at these. So the AI is there is going to get 15 points. The AI is getting 15. We're getting 23 and 5 is 28. 28 to 15. Hey, we did better than they did, right? Or we improved, they improved. Okay. And here, again, we got our 11-point token. They got none. They didn't make it to the top. The next one is... Three points for every idol. Well, two for them. Plus, well, sort of. Hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's move these out of the way now. All right. So the AI is going to get three for each of those. So three, six, nine. And then two for each of these because they're minus one each. Two, four, six, eight, and nine. It's going to be 17 for them. I would say they did better on that. For us... However, we are going to have done three, six, nine, and we get four because we didn't cover it, so that's going to be 13 points. Hey, we improved. Okay. Next, they're going to be guardians, whether they are flipped over or not, which for us is going to be 
that 5. And for them, is going to be 15 all day. We got worse on that one. Okay. Okay. Then uh, items and artifacts for them. This, this is going to hurt. I have a feeling. All right. Let's see. Look at the bottom number. One, four, five, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. That's a big, big scary number. Not as good as they did last time, though, apparently. So there's that. For us, we go through the deck. Let's see. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. We'll get back to that. 12. So we got 12, and then we got a minus 1 for the fear. So we got better. Minus 1. All right. So they're at 15, 30, 45, 45, 52, 62. We're at 28, 38, 48, 51, 52, 57, 59, 69, minus 168, Victor. Woo! What? And yes, it's my Marine Corps pen. Jess got me this. There you go, see? All right. Um, I don't know that it felt a ton more challenging than the other side. Now, obviously, the research track, having to discard uh, uh, idols to be able to move up, and it's more expensive and everything. I enjoy this game quite a bit. And apparently, if you go to, what's the website? A moment, let me look here. It says, uh, want to play a solo campaign? Check out arnak.game. Multiple unique scenarios, new goals, and you get to find out what happened to the Lost Expedition, Professor, Professor Kutil. I think that would give it longevity. I don't know how much more I would want to play this game, a handful at most. Uh, solo, I think it's a pretty good challenge, but it definitely feels like, again, I've played this twice, so let's be clear on that, but it feels like you really do have to do well on the research track to be able to win the game, and which then, if the research is driving everything, then it, it limits how much exploration you can do. I think, again, we explored two, maybe three tiles. Let's look. So the game does five every turn, right? Or every game. One, two, three, four, five. As long as, so we did one, two, three, four. No, we didn't do that many, did we? Did we do four? Okay, if we did, I, okay. All right, that was a little bit more, a little bit more exploring or discovering than there was in the last game. I enjoyed it. I don't know if this has a ton of legs for me personally, uh, but I enjoyed the challenge just like I did last time. The AI was really well done. The fact that the AI takes no time to run these tiles is exemplary. That is fantastic and super simple. The iconography becomes very, very intuitive once you know what it is. And it's just simple. And that's what you want in an AI, but still gives you a challenge without it being tedious or too much there um so yeah that was that was really good i enjoyed it i would like to in, uh play it never played a multiplayer i think that would be fun too 
solo, I could see a, a couple more games of it. So there you go. That's uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak. So thanks again to all of y'all. Thanks to CGE for the review copy. And there you go. I will be back tomorrow with Zaya, Ember of a... Uh, forget what the expansion is called, but the solo game of Zaya. Wasn't a really big fan of the multiplayer. Let's see how the solo is. I'm looking forward to that. So hopefully y'all join me. That'll be uh, 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. 1,500, 2,100 across the pond. And yeah, some stuff to look forward to coming up. Uh, more Power Grid, more Age of Steam. We have a uh, sponsor playthrough of Mosaic coming out uh, around the end of the month. I'm trying to think what else. That's the stuff that's off the top of my head. I know Imperial Steam from Capstone is going to be coming soon. So there's that. But yeah, there you go. All right. Embers of a Forgotten Star. Thank you, Goose Arena. There you go. All right. That's it. I'm out of here. I will be back tomorrow, 1500 Eastern for Zaya. All right. Y'all have a great day. Get vaccinated if you're possible so we can not have to wear masks all the time. But if you're not vaccinated, wear your distance or keep your distance, wear your mask, be respectful of one another, be kind to one another, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Victory! Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 Way to go, Indy. Love you, Joss.